Hey everyone, I wanna make this video to talk about some tips about getting better footage as a filmmaker, especially if you're starting out or just got a new camera. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're on a set with planned shot lists or if you're running gun traveling, whatever it is, there are always unpredictable variables involved and you wanna be prepared for anything. So my first tip is your camera can't see anything that you can't see yourself. I think a lot of people have the tendency, including myself in the past, to buy a new fancy camera with a nice lens, set it down, and then uh, you see on the monitor or your computer screen, you're wondering why isn't it a beautiful image. And the important thing to note is that the camera can't do all the heavy lifting. The most powerful and complex lens there is, or at least the one we hold to the highest standard, is the human eye. So if with our human eye, we're not seeing something compelling or moving in front of us, how do you expect the camera to as well? So when I'm looking at the monitor, what I do is, let's say, we'll use a sunset as our example for all of my tips here. Let's say you're looking at a sunset and it looks amazing to your eye, but it doesn't look amazing on the monitor. You have to ask yourself, why doesn't it look amazing? Why am I not compelled by it on the monitor? And slowly but steadily tweak and troubleshoot so that you get that image matched as much as you can to your human eye. So my second tip is that you need to remember that you're a filmmaker, not a photographer. And what I mean by that is one of my biggest annoyances in editing, whether it's working with my own footage or someone else's, is when the camera operator uh, is about to get a beautiful shot. They're, I'm bracing for it, I'm about to throw it in the timeline and they abruptly cut away or they pan away. And I feel like there's this common instinct that I don't, fully know the origins of, but that, that tells us that we only need to capture something for a second. I don't know if it's an anxiety about memory cards or battery strength or whatever. Uh, I, I think what it is, is like sometimes you're in an overwhelming environment. Like let's say you're, like you're at a wedding and there's stimulation everywhere and you're scared that you won't capture everything around you you'll kind of go and grab a little bit of everything, but not enough of any one thing to give you great shots. So my recommendation, and this is huge for me, is capture one thing at a time, make sure it's amazing, ask yourself, will this be something that I can use? Is this shot good enough to use? And then move on to the next one. And just be confident in yourself, prioritize what's there. If you're in a moving, changing environment, prioritize everything and just be confident that you'll get whatever it is next right after, rather than trying to get everything at once because then none of it will be usable. In a similar sense, my third tip is when you're filming, you have to think like the editor. You need to literally be asking yourself, will I use this in, in the edit? Because again, even if you are getting usable footage in general, right, like really pretty gorgeous shots, let's say you're editing a travel video and it's super fast paced, you're gonna do quick cuts around the world, whatever it is, to fast, upbeat techno music, like a lot of the ones that are on YouTube. But then you have this huge shot that you wanted to use, and it's a 30 second pan of our sunset that we were talking about, back to our sunset. How are you gonna throw that 30 second pan into this fast paced video? So you really need to, rather than just going out and getting stuff, think about how you're gonna use it in the edit later. And that leads me to my fourth tip, which is don't be impulsive. I feel like we're very much in a Snapchat social media culture. I know Snapchat's not as big now as it once was, but kind of this culture of like, I need to show people what's going on. So if again, we'll bring back our sunset, if there is this amazing sunset, I need to like just pull out my camera and show people I had it. But that's not what we're just doing in film. We're not just showing people, we're creating a cinematic journey. So you have to ask yourself, how am I gonna make this cinematic? Again, back to the edit. How is this gonna fit into the edit? What is the movement that's going to serve the story? This is all to say that you need to be patient with your shot selection because as a bonus, this is gonna save you time in editing, sorting through footage. It's also gonna save you memory cards, hard drives, and, uh, and battery power. And this is a silver lining with shooting with something like the Black Magic that eats up so much memory and battery so quickly. It forces you to be more selective with the types of shots you get. And finally, tip number five has to do with exposure and stability with the camera. If you've ignored all the above tips, you've gone in impulsively, uh, you've relied too heavily on the camera, you haven't thought as an editor, 
and you're just kind of going around wielding the camera recklessly, trying to get footage, every beautiful image in front of you, chances are you're gonna compromise the exposure and stability of the image. And arguably, I think it could probably be scientifically proven, these are the two most important factors in professional film or video. These are the two most off-putting factors if done wrong. So it's important that while you're trying to get your shot, you don't, you realize that some sacrifices have to be made, right? You, you, you have to expose for certain uh, details in your image so that you don't clip others and it's always better to underexpose than overexpose. At, at least sometimes you can rescue things in post when you underexpose, but you hardly can when you overexpose. And similarly with unstable, jittery, unintentional movements, yeah, you can throw a stabilizer on that in post, but it will look really weird or it'll have, you'll have to punch in a lot and sacrifice resolution. So it, it's better to just put it on a tripod, even if you think that'll be boring, it's better to have that stable shot if you don't know what you're doing with a movement. So anyway, those are my five tips. I hope they help. I hope they were creative and new to you, ones that you haven't necessarily heard before or put in that way. And yeah, I hope this video helped you.